Welcome back to my channel everybody. I have got not one, not two, but three <laughs> DIYs in this week's video. I'm going to put the timestamps here. I've got a DIY Easy Sew Garden Apron. I have some clay garden labels and I found a cabinet that I upcycled into a mini greenhouse for the garden. So I'll put the timestamps here and in the description box and you can skip straight to whichever one you want to see. As you can tell, these are all garden related DIYs because that's where I have been spending most of my time um, the past while, as you can tell from previous videos. So I'm going to stop the rambling and I'm going to get straight into the first video. For the apron, you're going to have four pieces of fabric. You have a main piece and I'll pop the measurements to mine here, but you can get creative and make your own measurements. You're also going to have a pocket piece for the front and you're going to have two straps. And I'm going to put the measurements to these on the screen now. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to make the two straps because this is probably the bit that actually takes the longest. I'm starting by folding the right sides together so I'm folding the fabric I'm just giving it a little iron in place because it just makes it easier to sew I'm going to take this to the sewing machine do a reverse stitch at the end so on the bottom piece I'm stitching forward with the needle in my machine I'm turning it and I'm going to stitch the whole way down closing this but at the very end you'll see I stop and I'm not stitching it closed all the way because we need to turn this inside out and give it an arm. Take your time when you are turning the fabric the right way out. This is what I think is the hardest part and it's just because it's fiddly. When you get to the end as well, just poke the corners out, give it a little roll with your hands. Take your time when ironing the fabric flat as well because you want to get a nice seam. I then take it to the machine and I just top stitch all the way around so I'm stitching down one side and then I'm stitching down the other side. Don't forget to do a reverse stitch when you start and finish. Once you have your two straps made you can move on to the body of your apron. So I am going to hem all four corners of this fabric so you can get your practice on with your hem. If you have a serger or an overlocker this will be easier but I'm just doing an old fashioned fold hem. So I'm folding it over once about a quarter of an inch. I'm ironing it and then I'm folding it over again back on itself and I'm just popping some pins to hold it in place so that it's easier for when I go to the machine. On the side you are going to insert your strap. So this is where your strap is going to go in. So as you can see I'm popping it into the hem and then I'm folding it back out on itself. And you're going to do this on both sides. So I hope that's making sense how I'm showing it here. When you stitch all the way around your two straps, they're going to be nice and firm in your apron. Top stitch all the way around your body piece. Don't forget to do your reverse stitch at the start and finish. I obviously have this speeded up, but when you're doing your top stitch, just be extra careful because you are going to see this stitch um, from the front. So the last thing we we're going to do is we're going to work on the pocket so you can customize this. So if you need a larger pocket or a smaller pocket, just adjust the measurements. The first thing I'm doing is I'm adding a hem to the top piece. So this is the piece that you're going to be putting your hand in to your pocket, I guess. So I'm simply just doing a top stitch. So a hem and a top stitch. And I'm then doing the same to all the other four corners. So again, if you have an overlocker, it's much easier. I actually don't have one. I really should buy one. So I'm ironing the three remaining corners. I have popped in one or two pins, that's just to kind of keep its shape. But as you can see now, I'm gonna fold this in half to find the center, and we're gonna place it onto the body of our apron. I folded the apron in half as well to find its center, and then I placed on the pocket so that I had a rough guide. Don't go by eye because sometimes I go by eye and it ends up being wonky. So I'm pinning the pocket onto my main body. 
once this is all pinned in place you can just have a look see how it's looking before you take it to the machine so i'm quite happy with the position of my pocket you can have it higher or lower just once it's in the center i'm going to take this to the machine and i'm going to stitch all the way around and don't forget to do a reverse stitch I also added sections to my pocket so instead of having one big large pocket I roughly measured out and I wanted to just make sure my tools so generally I'll have one or two tools on my phone in my garden pocket so I'm just measuring out to make sure it's even and I did a straight stitch from the top to the bottom doing a nice strong reverse stitch and that's how I divided up my pockets and I made three pockets from the one pocket. Are gonna play with clay and there is something about clay that makes me just feel like a child because it's just so much fun to work with. For this I just have some air dry clay and I have some letter stampers that I just had in my craft kit but I'm sure you can pick them up online or in any of the craft shops that maybe you're still trading online. I warmed the clay up in my hand and you'll notice I'm using, I need to get a rolling pin. If you've seen any of my videos, especially my baking ones, the good old bottle of Guinness becomes my rolling pin. So I just used it to roll out my clay and I'm cutting a rough clay shape. As you can see, I had fun with this. Mine are not perfect or even. I was looking at ones on Pinterest and they were nice and symmetrical and the same thickness. Mine are not, but we are not going for perfection here. So to smooth out the rough edges, I actually am just using a little bit of water and I'm just warming up in my hand to smooth out any of the kind of imperfections. I'm using my little individual stampers and I'm actually, I have an ink pad and I gently put some ink onto the letter before I stamped it in. I thought this was kind of clever because it means then you don't have to paint the letters afterwards with like a tiny brush. So I'm just using an ink pad and I'm putting each letter in individually. It's actually quite fun and relaxing after a while. I made like four of these um, and a few blank ones then as well. You can also experiment and stamp in some flowers. So if you wanna use just some decorative little tags to pop into your pots, you can have a little experiment, see what you can find in the garden. My clay took roughly a day to air dry. I did pop it next to a radiator. If you're having trouble trying to get your clay to dry, maybe it's like a bigger piece or a thicker piece, do try and bring it to a warm place, like a sunny window or next to the radiator and it will dry for you. I had some clear varnish and I used that to seal my clay, but you can get like paints. So you can get the acrylic paints out, give this a paint and then just seal it with some varnish. I left it like this and I just gave it a varnish. You can also use a Sharpie on your blank clay tags as well. obsessed with greenhouses I actually have a Pinterest board dedicated to pretty greenhouses so to get a greenhouse fixed with a zero budget I found this cabinet I actually had this cabinet upstairs under my bed as you can see it's absolutely filthy I gave it a good scrub so I use the crud cutter it's like a degreaser I use it before cleaning furniture that I'm going to paint 
So I simply scrubbed this to an inch of its life and then I rinsed off any of that residue with the hose while the weather was good. I then just use my vinegar water window cleaning solution, half vinegar, half water in a spray bottle, give it a shake and I cleaned the glass. Also, Blondie, she has my nerves gone sunbathing so I have all of the tents outside so she doesn't get sunburn. I literally put sun cream on her every morning. Once all of the glass was clean, you'll notice I actually discovered that the glass was removable. <laughs> Um, I had I known that when I was doing the other side. Once it was all clean, I then just popped it up on one of the potting tables and then I popped in some seedlings that I planted. Now, it did get cold during the week, so when it's warm, I have these out. Um, one of the days it got really cold, so I brought the seedlings back in because I was worried that it might be too cold. But during the day, this is a little sun trap, so I'm hoping the seedlings have a good start in here. got a bit of inspiration from them videos hands up leave a little emoji a garden emoji in the comments if you forget to label your plants I actually have in that greenhouse um, I forgot to label a lot of the pots I kept the packets of seed but I don't know what they are and I'm gonna have to just google um, <laughs> when they establish <laughs> to be like what is this plant? You might be able to help me when that happens. I also hope you're all keeping well. I'm trying to make the weekly videos a bit meatier. I'm trying to put, you know, maybe if it's an extra project or something into the video, um, just to make them a little bit longer um, so you can kind of enjoy them and find them useful as well. I don't want to make long videos, that's just rambling and um, so i hope you're getting a bit of value from the videos i know we're all at different levels of lockdown different levels of lockdown um so i know like in the likes of us you guys are different state to state uk is different to ireland um europe so it's a bit of a muddle at the moment so um Ireland are taking it nice and slow to reopen and I'm happy with that because there is the fear of us going back to the old normal. I say old normal because I don't know if we'll ever go back to that. I think we're going to have an even better new normal. I'm certainly loving learning things about myself in lockdown. Yeah, there is that kind of anxiousness of lifting restrictions too soon and then people kind of getting sick again. So. Um, yeah, I'm just looking forward to May 18th because the hardware shops are due to open back up. <laughs> Although I'm still kind of anxious to kind of go to the hardware shop, but I know when I get there, I will be in my spiritual home. Um, I have some wood I want to get, I have some brackets, I have a few little, you know, I need to get me to the supplies. <laughs> you can also hear my washing machine taking off downstairs. Anyway, that is me for this week. Let me know how you're doing in the comments below. I'm always on hand to kind of reply to comments, especially when it uploads. So I hope you're keeping well. Stay safe, stay home if you can. Follow whatever is in your little region and bubble. And I'll see you all in next week's video. Stay safe.